Hello everyone, my name is Alexis and welcome to class today. Today's theme for yoga is the fire element. And so to begin, we're going to start in Supta Baddha Konasana. So come to lie down on your back, bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees splay out wide. And because this class is based on the fire element, we are going to be doing quite a lot of core. So I want you to put your left hand in between your belly button and your lower ribs and your upper core and your right hand on your lower ribs, just below your belly button. And I want you to imagine that in this space, in your torso, in your core, you can imagine a brightly burning fire. Of course, fire is heat and light, but it's also power. It's also strength. It's ability. It's also consistency, <laughs> our ability to create strong decisions and also to move through life from a place of strength and stability. So today we're going to be working through several different core movements and core exercises to build stability and also light our internal flame so that when we move off the mat today into life, we have a little bit of a fire, maybe not burning under our ass, but <laughs> definitely burning within our core. So just take a couple deep breaths in, imagine that fire in your belly, breathing in and out nice and deep. Imagine that fire burning strong and steady. And as we go through all these core motions, core movements, keep that image of fire in your belly. Go ahead and bring, use your hands to bring your knees together. Bring your feet fairly close to your bum. We're going to start with bicycles. So glue your low back to the mat, bring your hands by your sides and lift your knees up into reverse tabletop. From here, all you're gonna do is extend the right leg nice and long, flex the foot, bring it back. Extend the left leg, bring it back. Extend the right leg, bring it back. And continue on, continuing to breathe, moving steadily, but not speedily. I don't want you to move so fast that you totally lose your engagement. A lot of times we get more benefit from fewer reps that are truer to form than just moving really fast to try and get through as many things as we can. Keep going. You're doing amazing. This is just to warm up your core. And as you do these, keep your low back glued to the mat. And you might not lower your leg as low as I am. You might need to stretch your leg closer to the ceiling than to the floor. And that's totally fine. You want to work within your own range of motion. Very nice. Go ahead and lower the feet to the mat. Maybe give your legs a little wiggle. Then you're going to extend the right leg up to the ceiling, lower it straight down, and bend the knee into the chest. Straighten the leg to the ceiling, lower it down to the mat, bend the knee to the chest. Straighten, lower, bend the knee. Straighten, lower, bend the knee. So you're basically making almost like this circle motion with your leg, but I want you to make each section of this motion very defined. So as you stretch the leg to the ceiling, you're reaching through your whole knee. As you extend the leg down to the mat, you're allowing your core to lower your leg. And as you pull the knee into your chest, you're using your core to pull your knee in. Very nice. Go ahead and let that right foot come to the mat and we'll do the same thing on the left side. So stretch the left foot up to the ceiling, Lower it down to the mat, bend the knee. Lift up to the ceiling, lower it down to the mat, bend the knee into the chest. Straighten the left leg to the ceiling, lower it to the mat, bend it into the chest. Very nice. Keep your arms by your sides. You can use them to brace yourself if you like, but like we did in the bicycles, keep your low back glued to the mat. And imagine you can use your core to lower and pull Pull your knee into your chest. Very nice. Go ahead and do last one. <laughs> Sorry, this is the last one. Lift both legs up to the ceiling now. Hands by your side. You're going to lift your shoulders off the mat and single leg switches. And if it's too hard to lift your shoulders off the mat, just keep your shoulders down on the mat and do your single leg switches. Scissor kicks. Keep these pretty steady here. Continue to breathe. Imagine you're scooping your belly back to the mat. Very nice. Give your legs a little stretch. Bring your feet back to the mat. <sighs> Let your arms come to cactus. 
and press into your feet to lift your hips to the right and lower your knees to the left for a very gentle spinal twist. Fire is, of course, power, but it is also consistency. If a fire burns too quickly, it can burn out. Bring your knees back to center, lift your hips over to the left, lower them down to the right. So as we go through these core motions, we're still gonna be finding periods of rest so that we can maintain our strength and our stability as we move through this practice. It's important in all life, you can't just go, 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 right? Fires need air and fuel and steady supplies of those to keep going and to maintain the bright orange power that we all know and love from looking at a bonfire or a candle. Bring your knees back to center, hug the knees into your chest, and we're just gonna rock and roll back and forth, coming up into boat pose. I want you to challenge yourself every time you come up into boat pose, don't let your feet touch the mat. Rolling back and forward, back and forward. Beautiful, last one. Very nice, and come up into boat pose, and you can keep your hands behind your knees, or you can stretch your arms out in front of you. Whatever you're feeling today, make sure you're really pressing your sternum forward to keep your low back nice and safe. Engage through the core. You can always put your feet down if you need to. Very nice. Come into a cross-legged position as a transition to come into tabletop pose. And when you get there, set yourself up for success. Hips over knees, shoulders over wrists, and move right away into cat cows. Really stretching through the whole belly in your cow pose and allowing your upper back and your low back to stretch out in your cat pose. Just a few rounds here. Mostly we're allowing the spine to warm up a little bit more. Because of course our core is what creates stability in the whole rest of the body. The more we work out our core, the more we strengthen our core, the, more, the stronger the rest of ourselves will be. We're gonna move into some sunbird switches. So on your next inhale, extend the left leg behind you, lift the right arm up, lower both back down. Switch, extend the right leg behind you, left arm forward, lower down. And we're just gonna switch back and forth. Opposite, lifting the opposite leg, opposite arm, lowering back down. Opposite leg, opposite arm, lift, lower down. Keep going. And through this whole exercise, keep your awareness at your core. Imagine that using your core, you can lift all your organs, your internal organs, back to your spine. And imagine that fire again as you move through these switches. And again, it doesn't matter how high you lift your arm or your leg, just try and get them both off the mat. Last one. Very nice. Curl your back toes under, and press your hips all the way back up into downward facing dog. Well done. Walk out your downward dog here, take a couple deep breaths, maybe see if you can find an element of rest and stability here, even in downward dog, we're using our core. So still make sure that your core is lifting your internal organs back to your spine. Continue to breathe as much as you can. Almost imagine you could breathe into the back of your body. So often we breathe into our belly and our ribs, but when we're working our core, imagine you can breathe into the back of your body. Very nice. On your next breath in, lift the right leg up to the ceiling, open up your hips. Breathe in and then exhale that right foot between the hands and we're gonna come up into warrior two. So make sure the left foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. The right ankle lines up in the middle of that left foot, heel to arch alignment. Your right knee is directly over the ankle and bring your arms out from your shoulders. Even here, engage your core. Almost imagine that you could use your deep core muscles to bring your hip points together and your upper core muscles to corset the ribs towards one another. Go ahead and clasp your hands behind your head and lean towards the right knee. See if you could reach the right elbow to the right knee. We're working our obliques here. So you're bending and then lifting up and with every lift up, I want you to imagine you're using your hips, using your obliques to bring your hips and your shoulders back into alignment. Beautiful, keep going. 
continue to breathe, keep your core nice engaged. Almost imagine you can feel your obliques moving with every bend and lift. Very nice. Take a deep breath in, release yourself back into reverse warrior. Get a nice stretch through the side, cartwheel the hands back down to the mat. Step your foot back into plank and we're just gonna hold plank here. Breathing in and out in your plank. If high plank is too much, you can always come down onto your forearms or you can lower your knees. And press back into downward facing dog. Very nice. Take a couple deep breaths here. Recenter, refocus, bring your awareness back to that fire burning in your core. Steady and strong. Inhale the left leg up to the ceiling. Deep breath in and exhale the foot forward between the hands coming into warrior two on the other side. So your right foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. Left foot, left ankle lines up with the middle of your right foot, arms out from your shoulders, nice deep bend in that left leg. And breathe here. Allow your core, the strength of your core, imagining your hip bones coming together, your ribs coming together, allow that stability to help you root down through the legs into the mat more breaths here and then bring the arms behind your head and bring the left elbow to the left knee bending and lifting bending over and lift these side crunches really target the obliques but also our inner core muscles so keep that engagement still imagine that you're bringing your hips together using your deep core even as you are doing these side crunches reaching that left elbow to your left knee Beautiful, a couple more. Nice, last one, extend the arms out and exhale back into your reverse warrior. Very nice. And cartwheel the arms forward down to the mat. Step the left foot back to meet the right. And now we're gonna hold a plank for either as long as you can or until I cue you out. You can stay in a full high plank, you can lower the knees, or if that's too hard on your wrists, you can come down to a forearm plank. When you can't hold your plank anymore, so if you're doing great, keep holding your plank, but when you can't anymore, I want you to lower your knees first and then lower your torso down in one line. I don't want you to just flop out of your plank. We wanna keep that stability in our core, right? So when you can't hold it anymore, just lower all the way down to the mat and take a breather. If you're still holding your plank with me, way to go. Stay strong, you're doing amazing. Beautiful. Lower your knees down to the mat, lower your torso down in one line, and bring your elbows underneath your shoulders for Sphinx Pose. Allow this to really open up through your whole chest and stretch out kind of those upper core muscles. Focus on your breath here. Bring your awareness back to that fire burning in your belly. The beautiful thing about fire is it helps us create consistency. Change doesn't come through big bursts of energy that aren't consistent, that are that are inconsistent. Change comes through consistent, steady burning away of obstacles, burning away of procrastination, burning through our mental blocks and our mindset issues. Consistency is the true power represented by fire. Take a couple more deep breaths. Keep your awareness at that fire in your belly. Allow yourself to feel its strength and steadiness. Maybe ask yourself, where can I invite steadiness into my life? Lower your torso back down to the mat and press your way back up into tabletop pose. We're gonna go through those sunbird switches again, this time starting with the left leg back, right arm forward, lower down. Lift the right leg back, left arm forward, lower down. Keep going, keep your core nice and engaged. Imagine you could keep your spine as straight as possible. 
And you don't need to go super fast or super slow here. I want you to focus mostly on keeping your core engaged, not so much how high you can lift your legs or arm or how quickly you can go. Slower and steadier, of course, is better here. Almost done. Last one. Very nice. Go ahead and sit the heels back. Excuse me, sit the bum back on the heels. Come into a cross-legged position. Bring your hands to your knees and we'll just do a few seated rounds of cat-cow here. Breathing in to stretch across the core. Exhaling back, scooping around the spine. This is where we slow down our practice. Just as fire is power, fire is also comfort. So bring the feet to the mat, scoot the bum forward and come to lie down on your back. Plant the feet on the mat, lift the hips to the right, lower the knees to the left. Just a twist, just like we were at the beginning of class. Allow yourself to breathe, allow your core to relax here and see if you can release all the engagement that we just built in the core. So often we feel we have to fight. We have to light fires because we have to fight. We have to push. We have to just do it. We have to go real hard and that's the way we get results. But more powerful than burning ourselves out is consistently watching our energy and keeping our steady fire going. It's not a huge bonfire that you can feel from six feet away. It's a small fire. Small fires are both stronger simply because they last and also more consistent. Bring your knees back to center, lift your hips over to the left and lower your knees to the right. Whatever you want to achieve, whatever dreams or goals you have, they will be achieved through consistency. It's not about how much you show up on a given day. It is about how often you show up. So in this twist and inner Shavasana at the end, maybe ask yourself, what fuels my fire? What are the dreams that I want to achieve? And what is the fuel that will keep me going? Bring your knees back to center. Extend your legs nice and long, feet as wide as the mat. And you can either rest your hands at your sides or if you want, we did a lot of work on our core so you can rest your hands on your belly and send a little bit of love to your core. Yogi's choice. Allow yourself to breathe in and out. Relax everything into the mat, into the ground beneath you, into the earth beneath you. Know that no matter what dreams or goals you have, you are held, you are worthy, and you are capable. Allow yourself to relax and integrate the work that we did today. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Make very gentle circles with the wrists and the ankles. Maybe give yourself a full body stretch if that feels good to come out of your Shavasana. And then press yourself up to a cross-legged seated position. Take one deep breath in and out through the nose to center and ground yourself after this challenging practice. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. If you enjoyed this class, be sure to check out the other element themed classes. I'll link the playlist below. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I release new yoga videos every Thursday. Until next time, have a lovely rest of the day. Bye for now.